hope everybody is keeping safe and well. This afternoon, I'm very, very excited to be able to introduce Dr. Mary O'Kane. Um, Dr. Mary O'Kane is a lecturer in psychology and early childhood, and we're really, really privileged um, to have her with us this afternoon. She also features um, on Parenting with Ireland AM. So Mary, good afternoon to you. Hey, Samantha, how are you? Good, everybody keeping well and, and, and safe and, and happy. I suppose that's the main thing. Yeah, well, that's what we're aiming for, isn't it? Exactly. Um, so thank you for giving up your time this afternoon, Mary. I appreciate that things are extremely busy at the moment. Um, so I'm very, very grateful. No problem at all. Um, I know that uh, we had arranged uh, to do the meeting in the super shed, but unfortunately our, our plans <laughs> had to change. So, so I'm now in my kitchen and I can't even offer you a cup of coffee. <laughs> and I'm here in my kids' playroom, so it's... <laughs> mm. But at least we can connect. It's lovely to connect anyway, Samantha. Exactly, exactly. And you know what? That is the most important thing at the moment, um, to maintain those connections and, and try build those relationships online uh, using a, a digital uh, platform, which, which can be challenging in itself. So Mary, I, I asked you because I know that you are, are an expert in this area and I'm really hoping to be able to support tutors and lecturers and students' well-being while they're using a digital platform. Um, so uh, I suppose the starting point really um, from our, our chats, um, I've been thinking myself a lot about my own role as, as a lecturer and um, I know um, from, from reading um, your uh, parts of, of your new book that it, it really, really came to the surface that it's really, really important as, as, an, as a lecturer and indeed as a parent um, that you really look after your own well-being. Um, I know you gave the analogy of like it's like being on an airplane and putting on your own oxygen mask first. Yeah. Um, and bearing in mind as well another analogy in the book, which I absolutely loved because I can really, really relate to it. You just can't pour from an empty jug. <laughs> so, yeah, well, that's it, Samantha. I think you're really right. And as lecturers as well, we, we do. We have to look at ourselves, too. And I suppose part of it is that we're getting comfortable with technology. I, yes. I've been lucky in a way. You know, I've lectured in Maynooth for years. Oh, yes. I, I'm a past you. That's it. I've lectured for about 15 years with the Open University. And I suppose I've gained some expertise through that in working online. Now, having said expertise, yourself and myself were laughing before we started. You, you think you're an expert in one platform and then you move to another and it's learning it all again. But I think you're right. We need to probably acknowledge that as lecturers, we're learning. You know, 2020 yes. has taught us all and it's a learning curve for everybody. Yeah, I know personally myself, I've been on the most amazing digital learning journey uh, with uh, DCU going through a, a full framework on, on a digital platform. And I've made, I think I've made any mistake possible that there is to make. <laughs> and I'm still finding new ones. So, so I'm really, really learning loads. Um, so I suppose the onus may be on us as, as lecturers and tutors as well in supporting our students is to engage in the CPD. Um, and to keep an open mind and maybe at times I kind of feel as well that we need to be our own best friend and yeah. you know we, we can beat ourselves up yeah oh, well I agree with you funny Samantha when, when when Covid hit in 2020 and as I said I have worked for years on the Open University platform so I'm so comfortable on them and I'm very comfortable with interacting with students on them but one of the first things I was asked to do was on a completely new platform. And maybe a day or two before I was due to do this webinar, I was watching on Facebook a clip of Daniel O'Donnell and Magella. Now, some of your students might have to ask their mammies who this is. <laughs> but anyway, they're, they're sort of my age group. But they were online trying to do a Facebook Live. And they thought that nobody could hear them, but everybody could hear every oh, no. word they were saying. Well, I laughed and laughed. It was so funny watching them. But then I was doing the webinar a day or two later. I thought, oh my gosh, I am Daniel Ado No, I'm Daniel Ado <laughs> mother. I felt like trying to do this thinking, oh my gosh, can they hear me? 
and I think as you say, when you realize you're not alone, like we're, we're all in this together and give yourself yes. a little bit of grace. You know, I, yes. The first thing I always say to my students is, can somebody tell me, can you hear me? Because you're never quite sure, yes. but I mean, yes. it's a learning curve for all of us. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's the thing. I mean, some of the best learning comes from mistakes as well, because you discover new things that, that you need, that you didn't know you needed. <laughs> yeah. And you know, when you do the really silly thing, and we've all done them, and you think, I am never doing that again. And you learn, like, the, the, the more mistakes you make, you think, nope, I will remember that next time. So definitely, I wouldn't worry about mistakes. As you say, you're learning. Exactly, exactly. And falling forward when, when you make them as well. Um, but um, I thought really um, in our chat, I wanted to give the students uh, a voice. So what I tried to do is that I, I compiled um, just a, a list of questions from the students because I know there seems to be for some students um, quite a lot of anxiety around uh, online lectures. And certainly from a, a tutor's perspective, it's not easy either and probably not ideal because the face to face meetings, I mean, there's so, so much that, that we're losing through Zoom. Um, so, Mary, would you mind if, if, if I brought up a few questions from the students? Yeah. Fire right. away, Samantha, that's great. Um, so um, one of, one of uh, the students just brought up this question and I thought it was particularly relevant. Um, it says, I'm studying online and I choose to have my camera off during lectures. Um, how do I get the confidence to be able to turn my mic on? Yeah, I, know, I think we can all feel for this student. Can I say one thing? And this is from a lecturer's perspective. And um, when you are giving a lecture, or a webinar or whatever it might be and it, you, there could be 100 200 people on the other end and um, it's lovely for us to see somebody with a yes. camera it's lovely to see a face because we, we yourself samantha and myself have both experienced this you're yes. talking to a huge number of people thing when you're not getting that response we get in the lecture theater and you're getting the smiles and the nods and we're getting nothing so i'd say to the student um oh be brave try and be brave put that camera on is the first thing your lecturer will really appreciate it yeah we're better with oh with connection, definitely aren't we yeah, definitely i think you, you need the, the the human interaction and you need you need to be able to read the body language and the gestures and particularly maybe from those students that you know don't want to to, to verbalize it at least you can see yeah. through through their disposition down the camera how they might be feeling uh, and it's not that as lecturers we're making assumptions as, as to presume how somebody feels, but I do feel that it, that it is it, uh, uh, certainly a lot easier when people keep their cameras on. Oh, it is. I know myself, I will say, is this making sense, guys? And even to have people yes. go on the chat box, yes, 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 because you're, you're talking away and you're thinking like that. You're, I can see in the lecture theatre, in the classroom, if people are going, mm hmm, what? I think, okay, they're not getting this. Yes. But when you yeah. don't have that. So from our perspective, it's lovely. The other thing I just wanted to say about anxiety. I think so many people are anxious at the moment COVID. I mean, people are very yes. widely anxious about mm -hmm. COVID. But the thing about anxiety is anxiety comes from our body's internal alarm system. Mm -hmm. So it's basically coming from our fight or flight instinct and it's trying to protect mm -hmm. us, trying to keep us safe. So something like COVID comes into our life and naturally our whole system, our bodies are on alert because of mm -hmm. that. But the amygdala in the center of our brains, which is the seat of where our anxiety comes from, can't tell the difference between real danger and perceived danger. So something like doing an online lecture, although it won't necessarily harm you, creates the mm -hmm. same physical responses in your body as a fear of COVID coming into your home. Yes. And your, your system can't be like differentiate. Between, it's like having a smoke alarm in your house. Your smoke alarm doesn't know if your house is burning down or if you've just burnt toast in the kitchen. It doesn't care. It responds with the same reactions. So what the student is feeling is really normal. And so many other students, I would say, are in the exact same boat, feeling the same. Just that anxiety in your body at, at this new experience. And one of the things we do when we're feeling that way is we avoid. So we yes. try to keep the camera off, keep the mic off, microphone. We're, we're avoiding the thing that makes us anxious. But in the long run, 
avoidance doesn't help. And the way to overcome anxiety is to find that little brave part inside of you. And we all have that little brave bit inside. It's about letting it out. So I'd say to her, even if she doesn't want to talk and she's nervous about putting on the mic, if you think, okay, I'm actually going to prepare a question. So I know what lecture I have tomorrow. It's on this subject. Maybe your lecture has given you a reading in advance or something. Read yeah. through it and think, okay, I have my question. So you feel a little bit more confident. Take the plunge and do it. Nobody is judging you. They really aren't. If you've done yes. it once, it's so much easier to do it a second time. I don't know if yes. you would say the same, Samantha. Oh, definitely. I mean, I can empathise as, as a student myself um, when, I, when I was studying and I suppose I would have been one of the quieter students. Um, and I can't honestly say in, in light of these recent times whether I'd be a student that would have my camera on or off. It's, it's just, it's, it's, we're in unprecedented times and, and it's not that we're judging. I mean, it's, it's what's, what's right for you is what's right. But I will say that when you step outside your comfort zone, and the more you do it, the easier it gets. And I know in your book, you talk a lot about that, stepping outside your comfort zone. And, you know, it does get easier. And, you know, you, you take a, a, a small risk, but that risk can pay off hugely. Um, and I, and I, do, I do feel that as a student, if you were to just try even one lecture, just with your camera on, and you might find that you actually get more from that lecture and um, maybe it's because your lecture feels a bit better. I don't know <laughs> from the interactions and um, that it's more successful. But it, uh, try it and see. And I mean, you talk a lot about that in your book, too, Mary. Um, you know, try it. Yeah. And we, I think it's human nature. We'd all like to be in that safe space of that yes. comfort zone. But you know, what? Yes. when you're starting to study, particularly, I think, when you're at the beginning of your degree, Oh, it's such a time of opportunity. It's yes. such a time of growth. And it's a time where you, you need to push yourself that little bit. Now, funny you said, Samantha, about you being one of the quieter students. And yeah. every student is different. You, you, some students in class are more vocal and some are naturally more introverted. And it's not that we yes. have to, that a student should have to change who they are. I don't mean that at all. Yes. But yeah. to get the most out of your degree mm -hmm. means seeing yourself in a different light you're seeing yourself as a student you're seeing yourself as a learner you are becoming something new you're you're becoming professional in your field so yes. I suppose part of that is taking these baby steps outside your comfort zone and it does get easier and easier yeah de definitely definitely and I think that part of asking questions because I know as a lecturer myself I have never heard any silly questions they just don't exist uh, yeah. You know, so so if certainly if a person asks it, you can be yes. guaranteed there are other students in that class sitting yes. thinking it, but thinking, yes. oh no, I don't want to, that might be stupid, I won't ask it. No, yeah. you're better off asking anything because it can just get different conversations going, different perspectives, yes. and we're all learning. I mean, I know as Most a lecturer, I come out of lectures it doesn't matter if it's first years master students you learn i learn from yes. my students you know every lecture yep. somebody comes up with something that makes me think oh wow isn't that interesting yes because you become a community of practice in a lecture. exactly um, and that's important yeah, it's, it's extremely important. And I know particularly um, when we talk about the early years profession, I mean, that community of practice is invaluable because we have so many different experts in all different areas. And I suppose, Mary, that's why I reached out to you even. But I think that um, we, we need to have that confidence and certainly students need to find that confidence to reach out and ask for help and ask for support if, if, when, when they need it. It's, it's yeah, but um, to, to move on, Mary, um, another question that came in um, was, how do I tell my family that I need space and privacy when I'm doing online lectures without offending them or causing any rows at home? That's a tricky one. <laughs> this one made me laugh because it's not easy. And there, no. I don't mean there is an easy answer. Do you know, I think it's compromise, isn't it? Again, I think, Possibly what I would say is, you're not alone in this one. And yes. the group I feel very sorry for her are the group with very young children in this one. Because whenever yes. I'm saying to an adult, a parent, 
friend or whatever. You can negotiate, you can compromise. When you've little kids, and we've all seen the videos of Sky News, yeah. whatever, <laughs> with the, the children coming in behind people when they're talking away. And I think we're accepting now that this is online. Yes. online. Um, yes. But I think it's negotiation and compromise. So if you are studying at home mm-hmm. and maybe you have another sibling that's studying, you might have a sibling doing um, secondary school exams, primary school. Yeah. Um, we have that here. Is. Yeah, it is about compromise. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's about mm-hmm. sitting as a family and talking about everybody's needs. You, yes. you obviously need to attend your lectures and that's fine. I know my yeah. son now has, he's in third year in music and DIT. He has this little thing he hangs on his door and it means, mom, do not interrupt me. I'm online <laughs> because otherwise I go waltzing into his room. But, and it's about thinking of ways that will work for you. And sometimes even with IT equipment, it's about working out a family timetable. You know, I need yes. to line up whatever time because maybe a younger sibling needs to use the equipment later. And um, yes. so it's about managing it, I think, as a group. Noise yes. can be another thing. And yeah. I mean, again, mm-hmm. you're negotiating with people like, Shh, while I'm doing whatever. Yeah. And, I mean, and you and I, Samantha, now we're doing this all the time as well. I mean, I have had, I've had my kids, I've had my husband. Yeah. Well. The dog. The dog. Yeah. Nobody, nobody <laughs> wants to go to the dog. And I'm thinking, well, <laughs> please deal with it. And nobody answers the door either, Mary. <laughs> And you're trying to be really calm and you're yeah. like shouting. <laughs> but I think we're all in the same boat. And I, I can see that this person doesn't want to cause conflict. And I think actually sitting in family and working out what will work for everybody. And there may be times you might not be able to have equipment at a certain time. Or I mean, you might yes. say to mom, okay, I'll sit and monitor homework at this point while you go do the shopping, but my lecture then starts at whatever time. So you're nearly doing favors for each other. Funny, and, and I mean, it's, COVID has taught us an awful lot, Samantha. And I think mm-hmm. in terms of our family, it's taught us what is important and that family connection, how much we need each other, how much we depend on each other and how important it is we support each other. So again, if she, the student keeps that in mind, it might help. Yeah, no, I I definitely agree with you. And I'm laughing about the element of planning because I'm hogging the kitchen here. I had to make everybody a toasted sandwich first just to make sure they wouldn't come in. But it, but it is, it's about time management and and planning. yeah, most definitely, and compromise too. Um, and the collaboration, I suppose that's something good. It's one of the positives that has come from COVID as well. All the collaboration as well between that community of practice, but also between families too. Um, it, it, it's certainly one of the positives that has come from, from the difficult times that we're in at the moment. Do you know, um, Stamp, I think we've reevaluated a little bit. I think- yes. Some of the things we thought were important in our lives, we've now realized yeah. are not what's really important. And I think for yeah. most of us, we realize what's really important is people and yes. our commun- our connections, our relationships with people. And yes. you're know, having that support. And I, I must say to this student as well, if you do find that within your family environment, you're not getting that support and you don't have mm-hmm. that connection, look beyond it even make sure you have a friend you can talk to you have you yes. know, an, another relative you can speak to and i mean there are mm-hmm. options in terms of i know we're in a lockdown at the moment but in terms yes. of maybe using somebody else's equipment at some point whatever so if you don't have that within your immediate family you yes. do support externally because you know a friend can absolutely step into that role Yes, yeah, a, that's that's a good idea, Mary. All right. Um, and a, another question that came in, and I I really can identify with this one. Um, it says, um, how can I handle mistakes? Online recently, I sent a message to a chat bar during a lecture, and I was trying to make a joke, but the joke made no sense, and I'm feeling really, really embarrassed now. It's, oh. Well, I'd say to this student, okay, first of all, oh, I think we've all done that. Oh, <laughs> many a times. Comment, you know, a comment on an online post yeah. or something, and you just meant to be yeah. funny, and people go, Rrr! and you think, yeah. oh, 
Mm. This student may have heard of the negativity bias and the negativity bias is something we talk about in psychology within us. The whole idea of the negativity bias is how we stayed alive as mankind. Our brains are hardwired to focus on the negative. You've probably heard that saying, our brains are like Teflon for the positive and Velcro for the negative. So yes. you do, you make one little mistake and it's like, ping, your brain goes yeah. over and over and over it. And we're, we're focusing on it. We're catastrophizing. Everybody must be talking about me and everybody, yeah. everybody else has forgotten that little joke you made. Everybody yeah, yeah. I, it's within your own head. You keep yes. Going, you keep ruminating over our past errors. <laughs> so we all do it. We absolutely all do it. So what I'd say to you is just try and breathe and let that go it's a horrible feeling when you're worried yeah. about a past mistake and that can bring on anxiety as well. Mm -hmm. So say to yourself, you know what? Okay, this is not the end of the world. So you made a silly mistake. And in fact, it wasn't even a mistake. You made actually maybe a very funny joke that they didn't get. So yeah, that's yes. the responsibility over. It's... But it went wrong. It went wrong. Yes. You know what happened? You survived. Yes. Yeah. You lived to tell the tale. It didn't cause you untold harm. So you've been there, yeah. you've messed up, and you've seen, actually, I can survive that. If it yes. happened again, it wouldn't be the end of the world because you know you've done it and you've managed it. So that's what I would really say. You've been there, done that. We have all done it. Again, don't let it stop you from interacting yeah. online. And it will give you a little bit more sympathy when your lecturer makes that oh-so-funny joke. And no yeah. <laughs> Or your fellow <laughs> student does it. You, you will have yeah. real empathy when you see yes. somebody else do it. But it, it, you know what? These things aren't, they, are, they mean so much more to us than they do to others. Can I just say one thing? You know, when you, um, we've spoken about mistakes, Samantha. Yes. Mistakes being, you know, a learning mm. curve. I and mean, that's what they're there for. They're so important. Yes. Sometimes when that happens, we become anxious. So we build up maybe the next lecture, the next opportunity to make a mistake. We build it up mm -hmm. to a more difficult situation than it is. And just something really simple tip, but it's controlled breathing can be so useful. So if you feel you are really feeling anxious about a forthcoming lecture, before mm -hmm. you log on, before you do anything, controlled breathing is, it's not just breathing, but it's breathing right yes. down to the diaphragm scientifically proven to bring down the heart rate, bring down the blood pressure. It's as if it sends a message back to that amygdala, you know, all is well. So if you're feeling very nervous and you just, you, to do this, you can Google controlled breathing, but basically it's breathing yes. in really deeply through your nose, right down into your diaphragm. With little children, we call it belly breathing because your tummy should move. You're breathing right into your tummy. Yes. And it does work, Mary, with, with the oh, younger yeah. children. Yeah, Absolutely. in practice, I, I, I've seen, I've used it as a strategy myself, and I have yeah. to say it does work. Yeah, yeah, it, it literally, I love a bit of scientifically proven, but, but it, yeah. really, it really does work. So if you are feeling anxious, if you go online, just two minutes of doing these deep breaths will set that adrenaline, cortisol, all these chemicals to your body, just calms everything down. So you're just feeling in that, in that stronger position going on. Definitely can help. One little thing about it though, all breathing, it's a really good idea to teach it to yourself when you're calm. So if yes. you are somebody who struggles with anxiety going online, mm -hmm. um, when you're in your bedroom, when you're going to sleep at night, practice and practice it so that when you go to online you're, you're nearly your body is nearly ready it knows what you're going to do but yes, Samantha, yes. it really works it really can help yes that's that's really really useful mary i know there's a lot of people that'll be listening that'll be thinking i'm going to give it a go i'm going to try it yeah. it's, it's... that's it give it yeah. a try i do yes. um, a lot of online talks for teenagers on anxiety at the moment and yes you know how they're like, they would be like um, second years or TYs in the second yes. school? And particularly the second years, you can nearly, it's maybe as well, like they don't have the cameras on, because I can nearly <laughs> hear them thinking, breathing, you're just need to breathe. And I say to them, it doesn't matter if you believe it, you do not have to believe it, it works, it really yes. works. You know, I do it too, Samantha. You know, if you too much on in work and you're feeling stressed. Yes. You really do, you can breathe it down. So give it a bash. Yeah, d definitely. I think we'll be all become explorers and adventurers after listening to this now. Totally willing to open up and try, try new things. Yeah. Um, our, our last question, Mary, 
um, it came from a student saying that after online lectures, I feel that I'm very stressed. Having to try and take notes and organize all the information. Um, also, this student finds breakout rooms really, really stressful, as often they have to discuss and collaborate with people that they don't know. Have you any advice for that student? Yeah, uh, if we do the breakout rooms first, and then we'll yes. talk about the note taking or whatever. So the breakout yes. rooms, again, and it's funny, I think you alluded to this earlier, Samantha, when you were talking about even in the classroom, maybe being one of the quieter students. One of the things I would say to you about breakout rooms is remember who you're with. You might not know these people, so you could yeah. be complete and utter strangers, but who are they? They are mm -hmm. other students in your class, in your year. Mm -hmm. They're in the exact same boat as you are. They, they genuinely, if you think about your motivation, I don't yes. think any student is going into a breakout room thinking, well, I'm going to go in here and trip up whoever I can. You're yes. thinking, oh my gosh, what have we got to discuss? <gasps> what have I got to say about this? Do I know anything about this? How am I yes. going to contribute? That's mm -hmm. what everybody is thinking. So they're not people out to trick you. They're kind of on your side. In fact, they're not even on your side. They're on their own side. They're only worried about what they might say. They're worried about making you show themselves. So, so try and remember that. These are my peers. They don't necessarily know any more or any less than I do. We're, we're equals. What you said, Samantha, about being quiet, I find sometimes in breakout rooms, you get one or two students who are quite vocal. So yes. they sometimes mm -hmm. take over that conversation, which mm -hmm. means some of the other students think, oh, no, um, you know, I, I don't know enough. I you know, these yes. know everything and I don't know it. And I would mm -hmm. say to the quiet ones, you just sit, sit back there and relax in your breakout room. Listen to what's going on and think yes. to yourself, do I actually agree with this? Because sometimes mm -hmm. the, the person who shouts loudest doesn't actually have the best mm -hmm. understanding of, of that discussion. Another yes. thing to check breakout room is, is if a student gives you an absolutely definitive piece of advice that sounds a little bit different to what your lecturer is talking about, always yes. confirm with your lecturer that that's right. But please, yeah. if, you're, if you feel you are a quiet one in the breakout room, mm -hmm. do not worry. Just sit back, relax, wait to speak until you're comfortable. Um, but but mm -hmm. in the back of your mind, think we are peers. Just because other people yes. are contributing an awful lot doesn't mm -hmm. mean they know more than I do. So I think that's the most important message I say for breakout rooms. Once yes. you relax into them and gain a little bit of confidence, it's like that comfort zone we were talking about. Um, mm -hmm. You, you, as you grow as a student, as you grow as a professional, it's a lovely feeling when you gain your confidence in contributing. Yes. It genuinely is lovely. And yes. it will lovely. come. But don't feel under pressure if you really, you know, if there's a lot yes. going on in there, don't feel mm -hmm. under pressure to contribute. Yeah. And I think as well, Thanks. Mary, like everybody has different dispositions in life as well. So it's, yeah. it's all about, again, doing what you're comfortable with too and being Absolutely. yourself. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. I know I've said to you before, Samantha, I know, um, say in my first term with the students, and yes. I haven't had these students in a previous year, so I get a new student group, and we're interacting, whether it's online or in the classroom, um, yeah. and we're interacting away, and you feel you're kind of getting to know your students, and you have one or two very quiet little students, and they, they're not saying so much, so you maybe don't get mm -hmm. to know them quite as well, and then they yeah. hand in an assignment, and you think, yeah. Well, <laughs> Who knows everything here? Who's been sitting there listening, processing everything? And it's a lovely feeling when you see this little dark horse come along and produce yes. this lovely work. And it happens all the time. And it is. Lovely. Oh, it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah it definitely it, does. Yeah, the it, other it, part of that question was about afterwards. Um, and yeah. I think with online learning, that planning and organization is possibly even more important I think that sometimes, you know, when you're going into a face-to-face -face lecture, so you're more prepared, you're, you're making notes as you go, whatever, and you, maybe at the end of the lecture, there's a break, can you change things, or you, you, you're looking over your notes. Sometimes online, you come off and you think, ha, ah, and you leave everything, and you, you don't spend that time actually going over, reinforcing what you've learned. 
Yeah. So it's worth thinking about um, study skills and things like time yeah. management planning. How mm -hmm. do you best take your notes? What sort of learner are you? Could you yes. translate those notes into a little mind map? Is this something you might dictate to yourself so you could listen to afterwards? Um, do you want to, have you written your notes all over a page? Do you even want to quickly type up bullet points? But think how you process information because it will, that, that processing, a bit, we're looking at children and we're thinking about children and active learning and children, how they process information and that's how they learn. But actually we do the same if we're yes. really processing what we're working with. So I think it might be worth taking a bit of time to think, what, would, what are my strengths? How do I best learn? How will I manage yes. this information? I mean, reams of notes from an online lecture mm -hmm. might be meaningless. Yes. Here, if you don't translate them into, and it could be just bullet points, could be a little, you know, an index card. But yes. Something meaningful for you. So it is worth taking a bit of time thinking about that. And even the overheads as well, you know, maybe saying, okay, I'll sit tomorrow morning with my overheads and my notes and you do it at that point. But definitely think about how you are storing and organizing yes. your information. You'll be very glad at the end of the year if you do it as, yes. you, as you go. Yeah, that's, I, I think that's there can true. be a temptation, sorry, online. I think there can be a temptation think, oh, I've done my online lecture now. Ha, huh, that's me done. So yeah. you don't Get that little step, yeah. Yeah, that, that's very true. And I suppose for anybody that's starting off um, a degree course or if they're in first year, th something personally myself that, that I didn't realise was even getting that bank of um, information or newspaper articles, you know, to maybe keep them all together because then when you go to your dissertation at the end, you have that bank of knowledge, you know, because it is a learning journey that, that, that we're all on and, and we're certainly in it together. <laughs> I think you're really right. Actually, Samantha, that's really important. Yeah, if you're storing it in a meaningful way. Yes. So that when yes. you go back to it. There's a, li a little thing I say to my students when they're starting in first year, and it's mm -hmm. four Ds. And the first one is just do it. So if yes. you are about to write an assignment or something and you're thinking, oh, what am I going to write? What am I going to do? Whatever, just do it. Yes. There's something on the page. So even if yes. that's something is notes, like you know what your assignment is as you're going through the lectures, you're making notes in the name for sheets, whatever it is, but do something, just put something down. Yes. The next one is uh, dump it. Are there things in your life you can dump are the things that you think mm. now say for example i'm looking at myself here but i wouldn't say i'm alone you go onto twitter and you spend an hour on it when you only have five minutes or yes. you know, the things that you think no i'm actually going to manage my other time better so things you can get yeah. rid of delegate yeah. you know can your family take on different things for you can you swap things yes. you know, can you get your brother to walk the dog that's usually your job and you do something for him at the weekend you know and the last thing is sometimes do it less well and this is one students are like never but sometimes we have to say you know what yeah. I'm doing as good enough job as I can do and yes. this assignment might not be perfection you know yes but going over and over and over it you have to at some point draw a line under it and remember yes. that formative feedback that you're getting from your lecturer is really valuable so you know, yes. get to the point you think no that's it I'm going to do it I'm going to learn from the process and you know, having those four d's in your head as you start can definitely help yes mo mo most definitely mary really really good advice um mary i can't thank you enough for giving up your time and um, this afternoon i want to give you a huge huge congratulations on on finishing your book and it is really really going to be a complete game changer for lots and lots of families and parents and children but also for the early years sector um, because there's such really good hands-on practical advice and it's so so relatable it's lovely to be able to pick up a, a book that instantly you could just automatically you can relate to it um so thank you so so much oh, um Samantha, thank you for that that's lovely actually i'm just thinking Samantha, can i say one final thing to the students as well? oh yes please Sorry, do i'm just thinking one last thing it's yes to themselves yes you know, just be really aware to be kind to yourselves look after yeah. your own mental health do make time make time for your family while you're studying the people most important to you it could be your partner it could be your granny it could be your friend have time for the ones you love have time for yourself 
do something, work something into your diary now that is me time, something that makes you happy. But look after your own mental health. I should have said that earlier as well, because that's a huge thing, I think, for everybody at the moment. Yeah. And, and certainly, Mary, from a, a lecturer's perspective um, as well, that, you know, our, our job is to help the students do it. And uh, certainly we are here to help. Um, and that if there is a question, just ask it, go for it. Um, because, the, you know, we're, we're more than willing uh, to try our best um, to be able to support you through this learning journey. It's, awesome. it's, I think that's the perfect note to finish on because that's exactly it. Your lecturer is on your side. They yes. Are, yeah. Part of their role mm -hmm. is to be there for those moments where you really feel, oh, I'm really struggling with this. Yes. Sweep up. You, know, you, yeah. you need to tell them. And again, as you say, Samantha, particularly mm -hmm. in the online relationship where you're not necessarily in the classroom so much, it's harder yes. for a lecturer to see that mm -hmm. if you just drop a message and say, you know what, I'm struggling. It, yeah, the it's, lecturer it's... is there to support you. Well, Mary, I can't wait till February. Um, your book, Perfectly Imperfect Parenting, Connection, Not Perfection. I, I just can't, can't wait to read, read the whole thing in February. So the very best of luck with everything. And hopefully we will get into the super shed oh, um, before fantastic. all of this. So the very best of luck, Mary, and thanks again. Oh, thank thank you. you so much, Samantha. Lovely talking to you. Thank you.